Because remember, these guys are subsisted mainly on large games such as mammoth, megaloceros, all of these large prehistoric mammals. So they have to eat up to about 10 pounds of meat every time they cook get a bite. And so they have to be robust. Like he, he's uh, making some kind of simple stone tools and these guys are unknown to make um, sophisticated stone tools and manipulate fire all that uh, all that good stuff and basic survival techniques they're already experts on it they roam around during the, the middle stone age period uh, middle paleolithic period now our final do and most important guy that that I have to introduce now is the Neanderthal very famous guy species in terms of uh, its placement in the hominid genus, the uh, Homo genus. Um, it's Homo Neanderthalis. There existed some 130,000 all the way to 30,000 years ago. So their time actually coinc coincide with the uh, existence of Homo sapien, that is modern humans. And here you see that that is also the time of the last great ice age so they have to be robust as well but they led a quite a complex and successful living by by hunting during these very tough winter ice ages um, building spear tools and hunting in here in this case that he caught a rabbit but they also hunt um, mammoth and one very unique aspect and also a uh, a uh, groundbreaking, a, a uh, surprising news that I actually just found recently that only about two weeks ago there's a science news from the BBC uh, website say, says that after the scientist has cracked the whole DNA genome of the Neanderthals, they have surprisingly found out that other than the sub-Saharan Africans, that is the Sam Bushmen, uh, all of those Africans. Other than them, the rest of all us, all humans, contains within us something about one percent to four percent of the DNAs that is identical to the Neanderthals. So this groundbreaking news actually indicated that some Neanderthal genes actually flow in each one of us, or most of us. And because this subject has been a long been a controversial subject, while, while when I was in college, there's still a great debate about why Neanderthal died out or did we interbreed it with them. But from there, from the most recent, the newest uh, scientific finding indicates that because we all know from a DNA now that we modern human only actually came from a very small group of modern Homo sapiens out of Africa, some tens of thousands years ago and uh, along our way out of Africa somewhere in the Middle East or something during a few tens of thousand years there must be some interbreeding between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens but ultimately these the, those uh, the, those isolated Neanderthals in, in isolated pockets of the world died out and they died out as a species but some of their genes actually inherited in each one of us presumably some in me, some in most of you guys as well. So this whole discovery really undermined and totally shattered the whole so-called pure human theory because none of us are that pure human. Actually, the most pure humans are the sub-Saharan Sam Bushman people. They're, the, I think, the, the purest uh, um, homo sapiens that contains all the DNA that's the purest to our ancestral uh, progenitors, uh, Homo sapiens. But nevertheless, these guys are, are very unique, quite successful in terms of survival. This is a also a, uh, a BBC's uh, reenactment played by an actor of a uh, Neanderthal. Looking from far away, he could almost be mistaken as a modern human. These guys are all about 98% human anyway. And this last image indicates uh, these, how tough these guys out and try to eke out a living in those uh, endless mountain ranges after mountain ranges uh, during the Ice Age. And right after Neanderthals, just uh, looking, looking around. 
looking around everybody that around you and that's how we became who we are today and it's really a uh, unique and marvelous almost mind-boggling journey but if you can start to slowly fathom the egregious magnitude of such evolutionary journey that you can start to see that if one thing we can say about nature is that nothing stays the same if you really think about it only about a few hundred million years ago the entire mountain range of the Himalayas was completely submerged in the bottom of the ocean and yet today they're the tallest mountains on earth and likewise only a couple of hundreds of million years ago we're still fish like Tiktaalik like creatures, crawlies in those marshes and very miserable, slimy, disgusting little fish-like, lizard-like creatures. And eventually, uh, we became, through all the hardships, around almost 80 to 90 percent of our entire progression in, in order in, 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 in becoming us. And ultimately, we're down the top of the food chains and became apex predator as today. So there's something to marvel and ponder and brood about for all you guys. And um, just really cherish the fact that who we are and where we are today in terms of history. And really to maybe gain some wits and wisdoms out of all these um, tough times that our ancestor has to go through. Alright. I hope you really enjoy uh, my little expatiation on the evolution of mankind, the origins of humans. Until then, and uh, I um, hope I see you next time. Goodbye.